I've been researching prehistoric Southwest pottery for many decades, and the one pottery type I always come back to that you just fall in love with are the Mimbres pottery vessels, the bowls, because they illustrate life ways and mythologies and the stories and the legends of their time. And I've had the privilege, the extreme privilege, of being in the back rooms of the museums where all this stuff is stashed away. And I've examined not dozens of these vessels, but hundreds of them. And I've recorded the images. And we have everything from Coco Paley to Spider Grandmother and the Warrior Twins. And we have hundreds of them to show you, and I can't wait to get started. It's going to be a lot of fun. So hold on to your seat. All right, today we're going to talk about insects. Membrane's art abounds with insects. On top we have some butterflies, stealing a little sip of honey from the honey gatherer. And on the margins of the wings are always these dots on butterflies, almost always. I'll show you many examples today. We have a lot of insects to talk about, so I'm going to move a little quickly. There's a lot of the locusts or grasshoppers. Notice the checkerboard pattern on the abdomen, uh, the starry sky or night sky, Milky Way perhaps. Very similar. You notice they're both very, very identically painted. And here we have young men gathering locusts and stringing them up like shish kebabs to roast. When the uh, locusts would come and attack the crops, the Anglo settlers, they get all upset. They'd, they'd lost their crops. They didn't have anything to eat that year. Well, the prehistoric Indians just uh, simply would, when the locusts came, they'd simply gather up the locusts and eat those instead of the crops. Dragonflies, a lot of dragonflies. Again, notice that checkerboard pattern. A lot of a uh, lot of uh, underworld or night images on insects. These are water bugs. These are pond skates. A lot of people call them water spiders. They they skim along on the surface of the water. They're actually an insect. Pond skates. This is a, a water beetle, or I think they call it a boatsman. It's a little underwater uh, beetle. These are all water insects. I'm not sure what this little fellow is, and it's interesting that he's depicted in white, he's usually in a white uh, negative image. Might be some sort of an ant lion, but it's definitely an insect. Six legs. There's another one. This one's sort of has a nice geometric pattern. It's kind of curled up. This might be some sort of millipede centipede. The spiral now that's created out of the insect, this is pretty common. They do this with the insect tongues quite a bit. And the spiral has a, a myriad of meanings in the Southwest. It's a, your life breath. Um, you, there's a whole series of meanings. It depends on how it's, it depends on the context. Here we go. Look at this. These are the, uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure if these are, uh, Fireflies or moths, and that looks kind of like a butterfly antenna. That little abdomen, that looks like a firefly. But look at the tongues intertwined. Look at that line work on that bowl. Wow. There again, the tongues <coughs> creating the spiral, the interlock spiral in this case. And here again. Here we have inchworms. This one's on a rabbit stick, rabbit throwing stick. This is actually a weapon, or not a weapon, it's a hunting tool. And here's a millipede or inchworm, not a, yeah, more like an inchworm, on a basket. Here's the millipede, the many legs, and there again, the checkerboard pattern, starry sky, pathway of the warrior twins. And here's another, <clears throat> there's a rabbit on top of a caterpillar. There's a quail with a, right there again, caterpillar on the quail. Now, all of these larval forms of, the, the caterpillars are actually larval forms of butterflies or moths. So the, all of these insects, all these millipedes, not millipedes, but all of these caterpillars could be uh, all about uh, transcendence, transformation. And we have ladybugs, lady beetles, again checkerboard pattern. It's always in this, a lot of times it's in this arch, like the Milky Way.
This is four ants. Always four. Remember, a lot of uh, images in Mimbre's art and Pueblo mythology are four. There's uh, actually seven directions. There's north, south, east, west. That's the four you see here. Then there's up, down, and center. So you often see four depicted if it's about this world or this reality. It's interesting. Here's two insects, and here's a fertility staff. Male part, female part. This one has something to do with fertility. This is one. These are undoubtedly the warrior twins. And these are some sort of ticks. They look like little ticks, which are a common problem in the Southwest. We see this character quite a bit. It's an insect form. There again, checkerboard pattern. Look at this funny head on it. It might be a locust of some kind. I'll show you a couple more. These are probably grasshoppers or locusts. Checkerboard again. These look a lot like praying mantis. Here we go. Here's this character again. You see this guy a lot. This one happens to have a coyote on his head. Checkerboard pattern again. This has an antelope horn. This character again. We see a lot of him. This one's very interesting. This has been uh, interpreted by some researchers to be Big Fly. Big Fly is the character that uh, if you're out on some adventure and you come to a fork in the road and don't know which way to turn in life, Big Fly will come and buzz in your ear and advise you. And uh, this has been attributed to a Big Fly, but I think there's a little more going on here. And I'm going to show you some other images. Here, just a second. Notice the, the legs, which look very insect-like in this character. This projection here, it's a lot like an abdomen. Then we've got these extensions out to the side. It always has the head. Look at these fellas here. Same thing. Legs out. These look very more human-like. This long extension. What are these guys? If anybody's watching this from the Pueblo cultures, who's lived in the Pueblo cultures, and you know what this character is. Now, obviously, this is a night sky. There's the moon and stars and the checkerboard, the Milky Way. But this character, he often, this looks more like a tadpole or a lizard form. These look more like birds, but it's the same form. It's the same. This has the extension. Let's go back and look at the originals. This is really the best. What is this character? Definitely a, a very strong presence in the Mimbre's art. Look at all these. You see them all over the place. And here we have a moth. Feather-like antenna. It's definitely a moth. Sitting on a fertility staff again. All of these moth and butterfly images may very well be about transformation. Because they do... They do, you know, the, cat the caterpillar, the chrysalis, then they hatch out and become the beautiful butterfly or moth. Notice the dots on the wing. This is important. We have all kinds of butterflies. These are all butterflies. Butterfly image, dots on the margins of the wing. Butterfly image, dots on the margins of the wing. Again and again. Now... This has been interpreted as Coco Paley because of this thing on his back. It's definitely a human form, checkerboard again. But this is not Coco Paley. This is a butterfly man combination. Notice the dots on the margin of the wing. This is not Coco Paley. Now, Coco Paley is often depicted, uh, I think actually a little later, with uh, insect like characteristics, antenna and a curly tongue sometimes. But I think those images are later. And you usually see it in petroglyph. In Mimbre's art, here's another one. This has been interpreted as Coco Paley. This is not Coco Paley. This is a butterfly human combination. Margins on the wing again. In petroglyph, you see Coco Paley with uh, insect like characteristics, but never in Mimbre's art. In Mimbre's art, Coco Paley is a very distinct character. Scorpion. A lot of scorpion images probably associated with the underworld. Don't forget, they're dangerous. They can sting you. And a whole bunch more. They vary a little bit. 
male scorpions. Now, this is a fun one. This is a spider. <laughs> I want to talk about the centipede, and this is probably where we're going to go. You see a lot of turkeys attacking centipedes. This, this centipede has arrows, bow and arrows. Now, the centipede is the one pole ladder. The centipede is associated with the underworld. In the creation myth, the centipede was what the was the one pole ladder that the, the people climbed up from the underworld and be, and became human. So the centipede represents the one pole ladder to the underworld. It's associated with transcendence, usually death. I'm going to show you a wonderful bowl. This was quite a privilege to experience this bowl. This is not a Mimbres bowl. This bowl is from um, Homalavi Bruin up in northern Arizona. It is a Jedido black on yellow, I believe. Clearly depicts an individual dying. When you see the legs up like this, this person is dying. We see this a lot. He's transcending. His innards are, look at that life, look at that life breath, life circle. Look at that. He is spilling out. That's one of the interpretations of the spiral arrow through him, obviously. He's dying. What's he hanging on to? A centipede. He's going to transcend this world or go down to the underworld. Notice the crazy wild headdress. Now, here's one in petroglyph. I don't have a photo of the glyph. I might have a photo of the glyph. I'll have to dig around. Same image. Arrow through the body, innards all laying out, legs splayed. There's no centipede in this image. I just wanted to show you that this is not a single thing. This is not just something we encountered once. Notice that headdress. Now, once you recognize this combination of images, of symbols, of icons, then you get to spot it a little bit more. Here's another one. Look at the headdress. This is a petroglyph. Innards splaying out. Now, his legs are not splayed yet, but this is very similar to what we saw in the bowl. There's a nice little cocopaly down there. In petroglyph, you always see him with the flute. In Meanberry's art, you never see him with the flute. He'll have a, st a mantle of authority or a staff. Or centipedes. He's a very long petroglyph centipede. And you, it's kind of fun that they continued it with a ziggy line, which lets you know that, well, you know, if you see a ziggy line, that, that could be the ladder of the centipede, the, the idea of the one pole ladder that they climbed up from the underworld. Another really good centipede image in Petroglyph. The Mimbres images we saw today were painted between 1000 AD and 1280 AD. And if you want, there's a lot more of them, and we're going to have other, uh, other videos you can see, but if you want to get a copy of the book, Mimbres Mythology, there's a lot of these images we're going to be showing. Uh, just email me, and the address is in the uh, description in this video. It's just kunkel uh, at hotmail.com, C-U-N-K-L-E. And just email me, and I'll, I'll sign a copy and make sure you get it. Thanks for watching today. Give me a like, uh, if you like.